Good afternoon, sci-fi movie nerds. We're here to spoil the hell out of Avengers Infinity War. I'm here with my niece, Jewel, and if you haven't seen this movie, make sure you turn this off right now. And make sure you bring tissues. Alright everybody, we just saw Avengers Infinity War. It was my second time seeing it, but it was her first time seeing it. Yeah. Um, overall, what did you think of this movie? Like, it, it was amazing. It was everything I expected and beyond that. So if you were putting this in like your top Marvel movies, is there any Marvel movie you think is better than this or is this the one? I think Guardians of the Galaxy might have it just by a smidge because there were definitely a lot of laughs, but it got you involved and it definitely brought all the characters together in a perfect way. See, and that see, I agree with her. Um, not that Guardians, I think, is better, but I also think Captain America: Civil War is better. But I think because of the way the big battle between the Avengers, I thought it was just a little bit more than the battles we had because the Avengers never actually came together all together. There was a lot of scenes where they fought together, but I would have really liked to have seen the Iron Man Captain America come back together. And I think we'll get that in the next movie. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of people died in this movie. So <laughs> I've got a list here. We're going to go through it and we're going to say whether they were dead disintegrated, survived, or missing. <laughs> and then we're going to explain what we mean by these four things. So I've got it all here ready to go. So you tell me what you think when I say it, and we'll see if we can get them all. So we've got Okoye. Survived. And we got Valkyrie. Disintegrated? And we've got... No, see? No. <laughs> I think Valkyrie is missing. Right. And then we've got... Uh, Wong. Missing. And then we've got Spider-Man. Disintegrated. Saddest part. And then we've got uh, Shuri. Uh, missing. And then we've got Peter Quill. Disintegrated. And then we've got Thanos. Alive. And Pepper Potts. Missing. Rocket. Alive. And Scarlet Witch. Disintegrated. Thor. Alive. Thank God he's alive. <laughs> Better than ever. Vision. Dead. And Falcon. Disintegrated. Black Panther. Also disintegrated. Bucky Barnes. Disintegrated. Doctor Strange. Disintegrated. And Gamora. Dead. And Groot. Disintegrated. And Heimdall. Dead. And Black Widow. Alive. Captain America. Alive. Captain Marvel. Alive, but missing. Ant-Man. Missing. Hawkeye. Missing. Drax. Disintegrated. And Loki. Dead. Mantis? Missing? No. Nope. I think Mantis was disintegrated, wasn't she? I believe so. Iron Patriot? Alive? Or, oh no, sorry. And then Hulk? Uh, alive. <laughs> Maria Hill? Disintegrated. And Mabaku? Missing? No, nope. he's, nope. Alive. he's alive. He's alive. And Iron Man? Alive. And Nick Fury? Disintegrated. With a bang. <laughs> yeah, that was a post credit scene. And Nebula? Alive. So, 
that's all like that's how <laughs> many people were in this movie with the exception of Captain Marvel, Hawkeye and Ant-Man. Yeah. Those guys weren't in this movie, but we so we don't know their fate, so we call it missing. Mm -hmm. But literally in the first what Five minutes of this movie, it yeah. opens up right after Thor <laughs> Ragnarok leaves off, and Loki's yeah. dead. We think Thor's dead, and uh, Heimdall, her Heimdall. Heimdall dies. <laughs> um, and these are real deaths. So what we mean by real deaths and disintegrated deaths is, at one point in this movie, when he gets all six Infinity Stones, he snaps his fingers, and then all these. Because basically, what he wants to do, the whole idea of this movie is he wants to wipe out half of the universe's worth of people because he thinks that overpopulation is going to be the end of the universe. So he thinks he's doing everyone a favor. Um, he's just killing half the people well, that are alive. And I wanted to get your take on this. So Thanos really believes what he was doing was right. And I think that's what makes the greatest villains is you know what they're doing is evil, but they believe it's right. What do you think about that? I think that he was he was definitely in the wrong, but he went around going with good intentions. He wanted to save not everyone. He wanted to save people that were alive. Yeah. Right? And the thing is, he had such a strong willpower that he had to kill Gamora, right? The person that we found out he actually had. The only person love he loved. Yeah. And he killed her to get the soul stone. That was the trade-off that he had to do, which was, I, like, that was one of the saddest parts of the movie. Yeah, for sure. I think that, and for me, Spider-Man's death. That was devastating. Yeah, like, yeah. Spider-Man, he was about to disintegrate, and he goes, Tony, I'm scared, and he hugs him. Like, yeah. that's what she meant when she said, you're going to need tissues in yeah. this movie, because there's a lot of powerful scene yeah. and it made sure that you knew that every person had its weakness no one was invincible not even thor the god or even vision right because he yeah, and vision's <laughs> actually dead we think because we think when thanos snapped his fingers to get rid of half the universe all the people that disintegrated after that probably have a chance to come back right it's all because of what dr strange said so let's talk right. about that what happened with that so right before the battle the climax um, Doctor Strange was going through all the possibilities with his time stone. And he said, and what, 14 million possibilities? 14 million and like 500, so a, a lot of them. And Iron Man goes, well, how many did we win? Yeah. Long silence, one. So we're hoping that, obviously, if you know how you win, you use that to your advantage. Well, so. And he says to Iron Man... Because Iron Man's like, why did you give him the stone? And he goes, this is the only way. So that's kind of, we think, a hint that he saw this one way, and that's why he gave up the stone, because this, in the future, is the way that we're going to save humanity. Yeah. I, I think that's just my theory. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think um, it blends I think weight? it's Yeah, I think it blends right, especially with them leaving alive the original Avengers. I think he saw that. Well, even you look at the first movie, and that bled into this, saying how... Um, Loki was sent by Thanos and all those alien robots were from Thanos to yeah. get the Infinity Stones and so leaving just the Avengers and seeing how they dealt with that the first time round I think that that was probably the original intention yeah and Doctor Strange probably said I need those guys alive so that's how it's gonna play out so they're gonna come back and then let's skip to the end credit scene so the end credit scene, it was powerful. I mean, you see Nick Fury and Maria Hill, they're driving, and all of a sudden a helicopter crashes into a building, a car crashes, and that's because people are disintegrating in the other part of the universe, and then both of them disintegrate, but Nick Fury, he, who does he call? Captain Marvel. So that's the big tease about the Captain Marvel movie, um, because he sent her a message, and hopefully... Captain Marvel ties in with the Avengers in the next one or even in her movie which is coming yeah, out. Yeah, that's what I was also thinking about. It could be that we have three parts of this huge adventure story instead of just two. And do you think Ant-Man's going to have anything to do with it too or will that be a side story? I think story? Ant Man's going to be before that happens and um, maybe Ant-Man himself is going to disintegrate or uh, Hope or uh, okay. someone he works with. At the end of his yeah. movie. Yeah, and they're going to be like, well, what the heck's going on? And gets him to get involved with the Avengers. I love that idea. That's awesome. Um, now, I don't know about you, but there was a lot of 
flips in this movie where you think somebody's going to die and they don't. <laughs> yeah. Like, we thought Thor died in the first seven minutes of the movie. Yeah, for the first couple minutes. And then my favorite part of this movie was the Guardians of the Galaxy. They were funny, it was great, and so they're basically flying through yeah. space and Thor hits the windshield. <laughs> right, and he's like, Spit, go with the wipers. Yeah, get them right? off. Get them off. But, <laughs> but they actually end up bringing him in, and they're like, how is this guy still alive? And they start saying how much better looking he is than... <laughs> oh, that was that was priceless. Sure. Drax and Gamora are looking at him, oh, this is, this is a man, and then they're making fun of Peter Quill. <laughs> They're saying, like, you're one sandwich away from being fat, dude. <laughs> he's like, what? Yeah. I'm not fat. Stop touching Thor. And then after, he's like, I'm going to get some dumbbells, which he said really hurt. Yeah, or Bullflex. I think yeah. he said, I'm going to get Bullflex. <laughs> but, yeah. again, that was the humor that Marvel is so good at. I mean, there's parts where you want to cry in this movie. There's parts where you're on the edge of your seat. And then there's parts where you're laughing out loud. And I don't think any of it detracted. No, not at all. Because they did such a good job of making sure the characters with a sense of humor yeah. brought out that humor. Whereas you didn't really have Captain America going and making jokes. Whereas Thor, who actually has a humor we got to dip into with Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, great movie. Yeah. Um, so now I want to ask you, when we get into, I guess we'll call it the second act of the movie. And you've got now... Um, Thor going off with Rocket and uh, Groot to build Stormbreaker, his new hammer, but it's an axe. And then on the other side, you've got Spider-Man, Tony Stark, um, Doctor Quill. Strange, Peter Quill all going after Thanos to try to get the gauntlet back. And then you've got the reunion on Earth of Captain America. I mean... There was a lot of stuff going on in this movie all at once. Yeah, and, for sure. But it didn't feel like a lot because they just blended it so well. Right? See, and for the most part, I agree with you. But I I just, I felt like they tried to do a little too much. And it's just my opinion. I know I'm in the minority for that. But I'd love to hear why you think it blended so well together. Like, well, if they had the big battles at the same time, so it all felt like one unison battle and everyone was fighting at the same time. That's a really good point. And um, having Thor also go back with the Avengers, it cut off that storyline and merged. Kind yeah. of. It reminds me of um, the Star Wars movie. Yeah, right. that's true. Return of the Jedi. You mean The Last or Jedi? The Last Jedi, yep. Yeah. <laughs> when, yeah, they had their own little things, but at the end they came together. Yeah. Like I said, I just wish the Captain America group would have um, hooked up with the Iron Man and Spider-Man group yeah, before sure. that all happened. But you can't have everything you want in a movie. <laughs> yeah. this, this movie is top notch. So if you were going to give this movie a rating from 1 to 10, where would you put it? Like a nine point nine. So it was it, it was, was awesome. Amazing. So people have to get out and see oh, this yeah, movie for sure right away. And then the theater is the best way to do it because you get you don't get those quiet scenes at home where they're all talking and you get that huge bass and you're like trying to turn down the TV. But it was a good it was a good balance of everything. Now, what did you think when all the Avengers started disintegrating? Did you notice how quiet it got in the theater? Like you could hear a pin yeah. drop. And that's the sign of a really good movie. They get the whole theater was invested. There was nobody, you know, whispering or talking because we were all devastated. Yeah, and nobody saw it coming because it went. Thanos had his little flash of whatever he saw Gamora, just as if it were the first time, and she's like, "Was it worth it?" Yeah, right? well, little Gamora. Mm -hmm. Oh, that yeah. was such a touching scene. Yeah. Like, what did you lose? And I think he said everything, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, she said, is it worth it? Yeah. He kind of had a flash, and then he snapped back to the Avengers, and everyone's disintegrating, and at first it was Bucky, and he's like, Cap? And that, that was very sad, because you see the struggle Captain America went through to get Bucky there and well and healthy, and then... And then he's gone, his yeah. best friend. And right. you could even... I gotta give Chris Evans props on his acting, too, for Captain America. Because do you remember at the end when he just he just collapsed? Yeah. He was like... He was so devastated and he played it so well. And I think, again, the acting in this movie... Did you notice at all Thanos being CGI? Or did he seem no. like a real person? I was so invested in everything. Like, there was... One point in the movie, I think, where I was like, okay, wait, I'm actually in a theater. I'm not in outer space, yeah. right? But then, snap, three seconds later, I was right back in there. 
And, and it's a credit again to Disney and Marvel. They do CGI so well. I don't know if you got a chance to see Justice League. I did, yeah. So did you notice how bad the CGI was on that villain? Yeah. Like the whole time you're watching it, you're like, wow, they did a really bad job. But in this one, Thanos, all of his minions, they were all mm -hmm. CGI, but they looked like real creatures. Yeah. Even Marvel in the trailer. Yeah. Right? They do such a good movie. Uh, or they do such a good job of making it seem like they are there when they're not, or they're not there when they are. Um, one, yeah. of, one of the other things I have to talk to you about really quick, like just some of the humor in this movie. So when Rocket gives Thor an eye, yeah. so that he can put <laughs> that it in. That worked perfectly. I feel like they built up the whole Guardians of the Galaxy just for that moment, yeah, right? It was so cool because he's like, oh, here, have an eye. And he's like, how did you get this? And he's like, oh, I stole it from somebody. But then... Thor just opens it up and pops it in, and Rocket goes, I, I really think you should have washed that, because I, I had to smuggle it out in my... And, and then crash. And then there was a crash, so he couldn't say, you know, bum, but it was hilarious. And there's, again, that much Even humor right in the worst Thor, times. Right when Thor got back to Earth and was right in the battle, first thing he says is... Something like Captain America, he's like, oh, I see you grew your beard like mine. Yeah, and he goes, you cut your hair. <laughs> yeah. That, so, you guys, I think you really got to get out and see this movie before somebody like us spoils the crap out of it for you. But I hope you watched it. We gave you a warning at the beginning that you shouldn't have watched this video. Um, I told you guys that this is definitely a must-see on my scale. Um, any final words about this movie? Anything you want to let the people know? or Just watch it and definitely suggest it. Go see it in theaters. Because... Oh, yeah. It has to be seen on the yeah. big screen. For sure. Um, it, it won't be as good in your home. Um, so if you guys want to find me on social media, you can look me up at, at MovieGuySciFi on Facebook and Twitter. Um, do you want them to be able to find you on Instagram anywhere? No. There you go. <laughs> and so you can email me, MovieGuySciFi at gmail.com. Thank you so much, Jewel, for coming on and yeah. doing the Avengers spoiler review. Anytime. It was fantastic. Can't and be. just remember, everybody, nerds rule the world. <laughs>